Hi, I'm Paul McGowan. Let's get to our question. Let's see what we got today. It's a Saturday, and I thought I'd just come down and answer a few of these. So it's quiet, and that's good. All right, Stefan in Burlington, Canada writes, I don't think I've ever seen someone do before or after of simple small room acoustic changes along with corresponding measurements that everyone can understand. So, um, not sure I exactly understand that, but let's, let's talk about uh, acoustic changes in, in rooms in general. Most of you probably know if you read what I write or if you've kept up with any of my uh, postings on Paul's posts that I'm a big fan of a couple of things when it comes to rooms. One, if at all possible, if you have the opportunity to actually build out the room, get the dimensions right. And I've spoken about that a number of times. There are some very simple formulas that uh, discuss the, the length, the width, and the height of the room. Very important if, if you can. But truth, truth be known, most of us have a living room or a bedroom or a den or whatever room we're going to place our speakers in. And it is the size that it is. So we're kind of trapped doing whatever we have to do to make the room sound good. And in that instance, and let's just assume that Stefan has that that issue where he has a fairly small room. He can't control the dimensions of the room. Uh, what kind of acoustic treatment could Stefan do uh, to make it right? Well, there's any number of ways. And, and th the opinions on room acoustics <laughs> are as varied as those on cables and every other thing you can imagine. Fortunately, there's a little bit more science and knowledge that works in room acoustics than there are in some of these other uh, contentious subjects, shall we say. So in rooms, and, and this, is, this is my opinion, uh, you can diffuse the sound and get much better results than absorption. And so l l let's back up just, just a sec. The ways that we can uh, treat our room given that we have a, a standard room and we have a, a, hopefully a rug or something down below to, to help out. We can absorb using things like tube traps, like absorbers that hang on the wall, uh, or we can diffuse. Now diffusion is always my preference because you can't absorb all the frequencies. There are, there's no such thing as, uh, as in, for normal human beings as a perfect absorber. But what we can do is we can diffuse sound so that the ear doesn't always perceive exactly where it's coming from. So I'll give you an example. <clears throat> if you have a, a, a large group of books in a bookshelf along the side wall, books have varied depths to them and different types of uh, material, mostly made out of, you know, uh, leather or paper, but they're, they're varying surfaces. When sound hits those, it scatters, right? And a scattered sound is interpreted by the ear more as something to ignore than a direct reflected sound as we might get off a hard wall. So if your speaker broadcasts out and it hits a hard wall in your room, and you get a delayed signal back to your ear, your brain is going to pick that up and try and make sense out of it, okay? And it knows the room is fairly small. If, on the other hand, the energy that it gets back is diffused or scattered, it has much more trouble making sense out of it, so it kind of just ignores it. So what I like to do is use diffusers. My favorites are the RPG diffusers, although they're really expensive. So if you look up RPG diffusers on the internet, you'll find um, a, a number of, of knockoffs that are frankly far more affordable. And I don't know that there's any difference between those. 
I haven't found it. We, we have some knockoffs. We have some original RPGs, but they work very well. So just be judicious with them. I try and place one behind the speakers if I can on the rear wall or the front wall, depending on, on, on which way you think about these things. The wall that I am looking at when I'm listening to loudspeakers. Uh, and if I can, to the sides were the point of first reflection. And, and here's a good trick that a lot of people don't know. How do, you, how do you know where the point of first reflection from a speaker is? Well, it's a very simple trick. You can have a friend stand up against the, the sidewall with a mirror, right? And you guess where the, the tweeter is going to angle out and hit the sidewall and then bounce to your ear. Well, as you're sitting in your listening position, just have your friend keep moving and have the, uh, the, the mirror, you know, held up like this. And as he moves, all of a sudden, you'll see the tweeter. And that's the point of first reflection. Just have him mark that point. And there's a great place to put a diffuser. And diffusers don't have to be something expensive. Again, in, you can use books. You can use pieces of, of furniture, uh, any number of things that break up the sound. It's all very helpful. And there, there's a million tricks to the room, which is one of the more important components in our entire uh, high-end audio systems. And we'll talk more about it as time goes on. Anyway, great question. Thank you, Stefan. Mm -hmm.